Hey, what's up guys? It's your guy Igor here and welcome back to this YouTube channel. Today's video is to get two reasons why is everyone leaving Canada. Now guys, a lot of people are leaving Canada right now, you can see on the news. And well, people are coming to me and saying, hey Igor, I'm actually thinking of selling everything and moving to Mexico. A lot of people are thinking of going back home immigrants who came here years back and new immigrants who just got their permanent residency as well so and even some canadians are telling me well if i had a chance i would have moved elsewhere guys so i'm going to cover all of this in today's video and explain to you the reasons exactly why now before we get into the reasons i wanted to show you something cool guys i know let me know in the comments down below what do you think i just did some car marketing for my for my real estate business <laughs> let me know what you think anyways guys let's talk about why is everyone leaving canada well reason number one is guys employment employment is very difficult and before we get into reasons let me tell you uh, about the politics as well so i want to tell you something i don't want to get political but i want to tell you something honest you know looking at what has happened in canada right now the entire political structure it feels like you know it, it literally feels that people are the well, Canadian government has a goal of destroying middle class intentionally or out of ignorance, out of being uneducated or being, you know, disconnected from reality or being so rich that not seeing how an average middle class Canadian is living. So sometimes I just feel that, guys, and I'm an immigrant in, in this country, yes, and I sometimes I feel there is almost like a goal to destroy middle class in canada because the decisions that they have been taking the poly the acts the political things that they've been trying to do is so ridiculously stupid that sometimes i feel it's either out of ignorance or on purpose i don't know you let me know in the comments down below they're trying to destroy the middle class and i think that's in the last eight years the life in canada has gotten way worse than than before the real estate prices went up so much but okay Let's break it down into a more structured one. Let's start from employment, guys. Well, look where I am right now. I'm in Calgary, Alberta. Unemployment rate is 8.5%. That's freaking a lot. So first of all, if you come to Canada right now, and that's another reason, another thing, the funniest part is uh, Canada is trying to ramp up immigration, bring millions and millions of immigrants into Canada. <laughs> you know, like more than half a, year, half a million immigrants every year. So they're bringing a lot of people into Canada, but unemployment here in Alberta is eight in Calgary, 8.5%. It's freaking a lot. So there's not much jobs in Calgary right now, and it's re pretty bad. And 8.5%, it means that 8.5% of people are unemployed and actively searching. It means there might be more people who are like, you know what, I'm not even searching anymore. So these are just the people who are qualifying themselves as unemployed. Some of them are already self-employed. Like, for example, myself. I'm self-employed, guys. Uh, for example, I'm an independent contractor working uh, for EXP Realty as a real estate agent in Calgary, Alberta. That's what I do. And it's not exactly employed. It's self-employed, fully commission-based, which is even more complicated. But anyways, re reality is high unemployment rate. Now, why are immigrants leaving Canada? Well, first of all, if you're coming here, guys, and employment is a huge thing. Now, you have to... If you were a lawyer back home or a doctor, you have to go through a series of courses, recertification, real licensing. You have to get your license in Canada in order to be able to practice on what you're doing, guys. Then look at this beautiful house behind me. You know, guys, you, I know some of you will be like, oh, it's an old house. Why are you saying it's a beautiful house? Well, I like it. It has a character. Let me know if you agree with me or not. But it's a pretty decent house. You know, I, I, I like character houses as well pretty nice pretty cool layout needs a little bit of fascia there and uh, i would i would change the soffits not bad well, okay back to the topic <laughs> i'm into real estate i'm fascinated about houses sorry for off topic but that's another reason why people are living here so unemployment is huge getting yourself real license and recertification you know, it, and sometimes it's ridiculous. You get Canadians who are enjoying it. You know, you're, you've been a doctor back home and now you're in Calgary driving for Uber, let's say. I was just talking to a couple of Uber drivers. I was without a car and so on in the car marketing yesterday stuff and I was talking to Uber drivers. 
and it's it's crazy they're working like literally like slaves you know very hard i used to drive for uber myself then i stopped when it, when it became unprofitable for me but some people have no options so they because of the entire economic situation or especially what of immigrants and i don't like this kind of i don't know how do you say it in english in russian it's zelaratstvie it's when you are happy towards somebody else's failure let's say so for example if you are let's say you are not successful in life and you are taking an uber and you have a doctor a surgeon from let's say bangladesh driving your uber or from middle east and you are like well uh, and they're my uber driver well maybe i'm not the, you know like maybe they're doing they're worse doing worse than i am and for some reason it makes some people happy it uplifts them other persons this you know like negative thing and i think it's actually it's complete nonsense those people driving through uber could be more qualified than those doctors in canada but people in canada the entire system is made in a such a way they want those people to come here they come here but they don't let them work here so they make it so difficult to get your license in to get your education to make it make it entry barriers on one side they help that person to come to canada because of their skills on the other side they want them to drive for uber and it almost feels like somebody's trying to take advantage of you but it's really guys uh, you know i don't like those people who are you know enjoying that thing oh my uber driver is is uh, you know like let's say a physician from nigeria so are those people kind of piss me off i'm sorry but uh, they really annoy me i don't like people who hate on other people and especially cheer when somebody has this kind of hardships and that's one of the things i want to say that's one of the reasons why people live here they especially through express entry you know what is express entry express entry is how people come to canada through immigration and i came here as an international student so i would say you have to be even more successful than me back home when you're coming through express entry so if you are coming through express entry you're probably already uh, you know when you're making a cream you know like milk there is a cream on the top express entry is literally taking that cream from other countries and bringing the top people from outside of the country into canada what is this biting me what was that ouch was it a guys what was that on the video you tell me something was biting me there shoot ah. ah canadian ticks they don't like me speaking the truth they want to, they work for trudeau they want to choke me when i'm just speaking up the truth or something some kind of trudeau program mosquitoes i'm just joking guys but anyways ah, that was a liberal tick <laughs> i'm just joking guys you know it's funny if you say liberal or conservative there will be at least 10 people unsubscribing from this channel regardless of which party i choose somebody's going to be pissed off at me but the reality is huge unemployment rate the next problem is besides unemployment rate is well you know the entire political system i'm talking about taxes for example you know they're implementing a rain tax in ontario they have a luxury tax now inflation has hit so high You know, if you're buying a Toyota Tundra truck, it's over a hundred thousand dollars. Now, Toyota Tundra falls into a luxury car now because it's over a hundred thousand dollars. So you have to pay a luxury tax. There is a real estate tax, vacancy tax. If you have your property in Vancouver but it's vacant and you want to keep it vacant, you have to pay one percent tax. So the entire agenda of Canadian government is not to make life better, but make it more miserable, in my opinion. You know, it's like, okay, so. they're going after cottage houses equity gain tax like what the hell literally canadian government is taxing the inflation right now so you know you're you're losing your money you buy real estate and if you, there is actually a study done i believe if you translate things into a bars of gold where you look like 40 years ago like guys don't quote me on this but uh, you do your own research but somebody said and it sounds good but i didn't do my own research on this for part you know to con conclude something i i need to do a more deep that that deep research on that before you start criticizing me but check out on the internet that's what i've seen and why i'm saying i didn't do my own research because i didn't verify how true that information is on my own i don't have time for that but there are people who are saying that if terms of gold and the, the how many pounds of gold you could buy a house in 1980s compared to today it's actually cheaper today but the houses are way more expensive so what means is that inflation is actually the reason why the 
houses are like that. So that means that if you purchase the house, you're kind of protecting your money from inflation. But the ridiculous part is that the government wants a cut. They want to make money on money that they print. So they want to make money on the money that they print. So first one is unemployment. Second the reason is the government policies and taxation. They are literally going crazy on taxes, guys. Like, it's insane how much taxes, guys. I pay as much taxes as some lower income Canadians are making in a year. That's how much government takes money from me in taxes. Literally, I just filed my taxes every time I file because I'm self-employed. I have a business. I'm a business owner. I cry a little bit. You know, I, I cry a little bit because, uh, yeah, you look in your bank account, you're like, hey, I'm not doing too bad. You file your taxes and you're like, oh, I, I'm doing worse than I expected. <laughs> every year every time anyways back to the video third reason why immigrants are leaving is well unaffordable housing i just told you about the unaffordable housing can you imagine first of all the housing is unaffordable they're also thinking of taxing your primary residence and everything like that you know <laughs> some grandfather is annoyed uh, you know people get annoyed when i start recording something on the camera and also people's mentality here is effed up a little bit especially in where place i am right now but anyways, I want to say that housing is super unaffordable. Went up so many times over the last eight years. I just helped purchase my co-worker. We used to work together in Red Deer. And I purchased a home. We worked at the same job. He could have had the same kind of home. And right now he had to buy in Red Deer because he couldn't afford in the Calgary anymore. So I was his agent. I helped him purchase. We are heading out there in two hours. To give him the keys it's going to be like one and a half year, uh, hour drive now he has to drive one and a half hour from calgary in order to have the house that he could have purchased when we worked the, together in the same company on the same kind of position uh, eight, eight, not eight years ago four and a half years ago yeah four and a half years ago when i purchased my second property here in calgary we worked together and th since then the property that he could have I afforded he could have afforded it as well it went up so much, it became out of his budget now. And honestly, it probably would be out of my budget if I stayed at the same job and made the same kind of income. So I'm saying this, guys, is, is, it's messed up. Housing is really unaffordable. And another problem is, well, next reason is debt. Guys, credit cards, debt, lines of credit. A lot of people, even Canadians, are living in debt. You're literally spending most of your income to pay off your mortgages or your rent, or your credit cards, or your debt. Some people get into this trap here of interest rates and they keep on paying interest on interest on interest. And then you know what happens afterwards? They take a loan to pay off another loan. And my wife, I didn't know about that. She's a mortgage broker with DOC Clear Trust Mortgages. She's originally from India, Mumbai, and people come to her for mortgages. Guys, why do you think people come for a mortgage to a mortgage broker? to buy a house or something else. Not only that, like for example, debt consolidation. They also come for that. So what they literally do is they say, hey, look, I have this beautiful 112 house right over here. I've been the owner of this, but I have, let's say $100,000 debt on my credit cards and things like that. Interest is huge, I cannot pay it off. But this house is half paid off. So they would take a second mortgage or a refinance or um, home line of equity. So long story short, they give part of the house back to the bank to take out money under a lower interest to pay off a higher interest mortgages. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. And a lot of people are doing it. More and more people are struggling like that in Canada. So why do people leave Canada? Well, it's not as a great dream country as it used to be for a lot of people, a lot of Canadians, middle class are struggling more, you know, uh, Calgary is still a better place than Toronto and Vancouver in that sense. People are still making more money even though unemployment is pretty high. And uh, that's why I'm here. You know, if I was in Toronto or Vancouver, I would probably be in a similar kind of situation. But that's why I moved from there. Where would I move next if I want to survive? Where is the least affordable, I mean, least unaffordable housing? It'd probably be Saskatchewan. But the other problem is, what do you want to do in a Saskatchewan? I don't want to be living in Saskatchewan. That's not why I went, came to Canada. So and one reason is people run away from debt. They take all these lines of credit, all the mortgages, all the other things. And uh, they don't want to pay it off. They don't know about the proce procedure of bankruptcy or, you know, for example, consumer proposal. They grab what they have. 
they run back home, say, F Trudeau, screw the government, try to get me now. And people who are here, they lose money, they can do nothing about those people in other countries, go after the debt, pie, unpaid taxes, unpaid mortgages, unpaid this, like F this, and just leave. Uh, some people sell their properties and just leave, take their money and go for retirement. I just had a conversation with a friend of mine who was thinking of going to Mexico. Came to Canada, did the immigration stayed here, you know, saved up money, built equity in the real estate, and now it's like, you know what? If I stay in Canada, I have to keep on working the rest of my life. And I could literally take my equity right now and retire in Mexico. I haven't moved there yet, but thinking about it, I'm just saying, guys, a lot of people are leaving Canada for these kind of reasons. I think, think, I think things have to change because this is just messed up. It's difficult, guys. It's pretty pathetic that this is happening in Canada. And then we pray that there will be another liberal mosquito or a tick biting me, trying to kill me while I'm making a video for you guys. I'm just joking, guys. And honestly, I'm not yeah, as, 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 uh, associating myself with any party or a or political system. You know, I'm just, I'm just blubbering here, but I just want to say that things have gone worse. I don't know who to blame for it, but I think it's general government policies and the entire thing. They brought a lot of immigrants, didn't have enough housing, didn't have enough jobs, didn't have enough infrastructure, didn't do enough planning, printed too much of money, didn't plan things. You know, they even did the stupidest thing in terms of interest rates. They increased the interest rates and then right after that they, they made all the business owners pay off the SIBA loan after that. Not before that, but after that. They made money more expensive and then they made everyone go and borrow money to pay off loans. And you know how what some business owners did? Well, they just filed for bankruptcy for those businesses. And now again, the revenue has to go figure it out. They transferred their revenues to a different business and slowly killed uh, their other businesses and didn't pay it. Some people went and took a loan. Some people like me, I went and I paid it off and I took a huge hit because the interest rates are so high. I cannot be borrowing money right now. I mean, I can, but I'm not going to be paying on a personal line of credit 12% right now. And I don't want to be taking a line of credit on my house because, hey, I want to pay. Isn't the goal of owning a house to eventually have it paid off? If I keep on taking more debt, on the same property, the, uh, the ultimate goal is to build equity, right? So it's a good thing to take money out of your property to build equity, but it's not good to take money out of the property just for spending it. Uh, not, money has to make money and not lose money. So that's what I want to say, guys. People are living because they can't give me the expectations. They are coming here struggling, spending all their money for a living, for the housing, for the groceries that are ridiculously expensive, for the taxes, for the ridiculous government policy the government has implemented. Yeah, all of these things, uh, guys, together are pretty crazy. So let me know what do you think. Are you planning to stay here or not? I'll tell you my position. I'm going to stay in Canada for now. I think it's still a great country. I take risk as an opportunity. I see hardship as a challenge for improvement and for overcoming. And I think that there is still plenty of opportunities in Canada there. You know, eh, just have to right, find the right geographical place, the right pl place for yourself. And I think for now, at least in 2024 and next upcoming maybe five years, maybe 10 years, depends on who comes first. I think Calgary is the place to be. I think this is the place where the real estate is not yet up to its max potential. The real estate is going to grow in the next 5, 10, 20 years. And then maybe it's going to be late. But if I stay here, like because I'm already here, I might be in the advantage over other people who are going to be coming later. In 15, 20 years, they will be in a disadvantage. So I think that why strategically the city is probably better for me. That's what I wanted to say, guys. Anyways, I, I love Calgary. I still think Canada is a great country. And I hope things do get better. But these are the reasons. I'm not going anywhere. Sorry, guys. You have to, you have to get used to me. I'm staying here. Uh, it's way worse in my country than it's here. I'm from Ukraine, just so you know. And uh, yeah, and I'm not going to my wife's country, to India. Because she already gave up her citizenship there by getting Canadian citizenship. So uh, yeah, guys. I'm staying here with you and we will fight to make Canada great again, I guess.
Should I go into politics to resolve these things? So much of risk, so much of hate. I don't really want to go there, but let me know, guys. If you want your guy eager to go into politics and try to do some, some better changes, because what's happening right now, I feel like politicians are just, they're just so rich. You know, they just don't know what our problems are. You have to be at the bottom level, have to come to Canada as an immigrant, face all the challenges, all the disrespect all the hardships in order to know how it is. If you were raised by a Canadian family, by especially a rich Canadian family, and you never knew, and you always had people cooking food for you, taking out your garbage, doing your groceries, and you're just like a rich kid, then definitely you're going to be a crappy politician. See you guys in the next video. Bye for now.